Hello everyone, welcome to this video on ServiceNow SLA reporting, mainly ServiceNow response and resolution SLA reporting. Before we head over to the ServiceNow reporting part, let's first see how SLAs are configured in ServiceNow and how the SLA clocks work. Here I am at my ServiceNow instance. If we head over to the All tab and look up the SLA definitions, these are nothing but all the values or configurations made and stored in the contract SLA table of ServiceNow. Keep in mind that not everyone will have access to this. Only certain people might have access in your organization. But we'll still take a look at this so that we'll understand better how SLAs work. And from there we can create reports out of those. If you focus your attention on the priority part here, so these are all the SLAs configured for each priority. These are the out of the box ones. You might have different as per your contract with your client, but in a nutshell, we have resolution and response SLAs for each priority. Starting with the priority one, since these are high impact incidents, they are expected to be resolved and responded as quickly as possible because they are causing a lot of disruption to the business. So right off the bat, we see that P1 resolution is one hour and P1 response is 15 minutes. That essentially means that someone has to acknowledge a P1 incident in 15 minutes. Otherwise, it's going to breach as per the contract, which is configured in service now, of course. And then we have a one hour resolution as well. Now, next, we see the targets. Obviously, one is resolution. That is how long someone takes to resolve that incident. The second was response, how long someone takes to acknowledge it. Then if we see the schedule is blank for these, that means that these SLA clocks don't work on a specific schedule. They are 24 seven. And that makes sense because these are high impact incidents. They cause a lot of disruption and they are expected to be resolved as quickly as possible and acknowledged as quickly as possible. If we head over to the P2 ones, these have a schedule. Even the P3 SLAs have scheduled. And those mean that from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. weekdays, they will run. But if we hit on a weekend or if we go after five o'clock, those SLA clocks will stop and you'll have your time again when you log back in for working. So these are not that tight because these incidents are not that disruptive. They're not causing a lot of impact overall on the organization. That's why these clocks are configured that way. So in a nutshell, that was all the definitions that you see. This is of course going to change as per your own configuration, how your admin is configured, how your contract is meant to be with the client. But on a general basis, this is how it is out of the box. People customize these things as well. So we can't say for sure this is going to be the exact same in your organization. Now let's head over to the reporting part. If we go to all and search for reports. Let's start by creating a new report in a new tab. And this will be our SLA report for resolution SLA. The source type will be table because everything in service is stored in multiple tables. You have all the entries in those. We have a couple of incident task SLAs table, etc. Now the tables, most of the people, they bring the SLA part from task SLA tables. I myself, I go to incident underscore SLA table because it's essentially a view. And uh, why I go there is I get more columns at my disposal from incident. So it's essentially a join between incident and the task SLA table. And that's a view. So it's up to you. You can go to task underscore SLA table or you can come to the incident underscore SLA view. Now we see the incident underscore SLA view in the drop down. Let's pick up that. If we click on next. We have the type. Let's keep it as a list for now because we want to see visually what data we have in the fields. Let's click on next. Once we come to configure, let's choose the column so that we'll have a better idea of what we are reporting on. Initially, we have a couple of columns in our selected fields. Those are number, the incident number, the category of that incident, SLA definition, like we saw before, the definitions that you have set up and the stage of that SLA. Now let's bring in more columns to drive our point home. I'll start with the created on when the incident was created. Then I'll go to the breach time. So that's essentially when the incident is supposed to breach as per the SLA. 
then let's also take the business elapsed time that is how long the incident was open according to the SLA clock if it's a week 24 7 it's going to run 24 7 but if it's a weekday the SLA clock will only run during those working hours and on weekdays next let's also take the has breached column this is going to help us figure out whether the SLA has been breached on that incident or not and lastly let's also take the SLA definition now we already have SLA definition but there's one more thing that's going to help us distinguish between response and resolution SLAs and that is the SLA definition target so it is on inside the SLA definition part if you click on SLA definition here and then if you expand it with a hierarchy you'll have more fields as part of SLA definition so we are going to focus on the target let's bring the target on the right side and you can also come back out of it from the hierarchy you can click on incident on incident SLA fields and you'll come back to where you were so this this information is enough for us let's click on OK and let's run this report to see what we get so we have the incident number we have the category on that incident we have the SLA definitions which we saw previously we have the stage of that SLA so stages of SLAs are nothing but they are dependent on those states if an incident is open the SLA stage will be in progress if an incident is closed the SLA stage will be completed if an incident is on hold the SLA stage will be pending so it's not going to move anywhere or it will be paused sorry so SLA stage will be paused if the incident is on hold and we have breached and other ones as well so if something has breached it's going to go in breach obviously and the cancelled one is an important one so this is where a lot of confusion arises these SLA stages get cancelled in the SLA table or view when your priority gets changed there are other outliers as well but usually what happens is when you change the priority the SLA stage of that older priority gets cancelled so let's narrow down our search results now let's only focus on the completed stage because we are going to do historical reporting that's what matters at the end of the day so stage let's take it as completed let's run this report we have now narrowed it down to all the completed stages so we are you're going to see if something has breached something has not breached and now if you want to just pull in the response part or the resolution part you can then put a filter on the SLA definition and like we did before we went into the hierarchy of SLA definition and we went to the target so if we take the target as response we are going to get only response SLA matrix and that's our definition and sorry I took the table it's my bad so it's going to be SLA definition and target so if it's a response it's going to only give you the response SLA's values from the incident SLA table see we are going to the incident SLA view and if you just put a SLA definition target filter as response you're only going to get the response SLA values so these are the response SLA's it's saying that one was breached because it took uh, more than 15 minutes for P1 incident to be responded so that's that makes sense as per our definition we were supposed to respond within 15 minutes but that incident was responded within 18 minutes and that's why it is breached so we see the response targets now if you see the resolution target is the same case you now see the resolution target on the incident since it was a p1 it's one hour and someone worked on it and closed it within 23 minutes as per the business elapsed time that's what we see and it's not breached obviously because someone closed it within one hour as per the SLA so this was how we can do a resolution response from one single table now sometimes people don't find it easy or let's say there's data integrity problems for them when they put the response filter because there are a couple of times when incidents hop from different queues so there's one more cool way of going and finding the response part like how long someone has taken to respond to an incident to a from a view called incident metric so let's start doing that now if we go back to the home page again and if we search for reports
let's create a new report this time around we are going to just pull the response timings from the incident metric view so we have a view called incident metric in service now this view tracks all the historical data on an incident it's a join of couple of tables in service now we don't have to go to the nitty gritty of those things now but it's a view it's essentially a view a database view in service now so let's select the data sources table because at the end of the day it's just a table a virtual table now the table part so here we're going to select incident underscore metric this view contains all the historical information about that incident type let's just keep keep it as list for now we're going to see what all we have so in the choose columns we already have numbers from the incident metric view we have the category of that incident the priority escalation values value is something important which we are going to focus on currently and now let's take the duration as well so duration is how long how long was that incident in a particular value so we'll see that once we focus on the data part so just take the mi duration that's what matters now because that's going to give us how long was this how long was the duration of that incident in the value of that record so if we run this we we get back couple of details here if you focus on the duration part of things and the value so mostly values are empty what we are going to focus on is the new value so anytime an incident is coming up in service now if it is locked it's going to be in a new state after that when someone acknowledges it it goes to in progress and then they can keep playing around with it they can put it in pending or whatever that is so this view is going to help you a lot in terms of your reporting what we are essentially going to see is how long was it there in the new state the value as new so let's just say value is new so how long was how long did it take in that new state so we have one incident obviously i don't have a lot many records in my new instance now so we can see right off the bat in the new state it was there for 55 seconds that means some incident came in it was a p1 incident and before someone could acknowledge it it was a new state that was there for 55 seconds so that's our response time as soon as someone moved it to in progress the value gets changed to in progress and you won't see the duration for that so this is what i wanted to tell you you can also put assignment group filters on top of this so that you can target on your own specific teams work how long they took for responding to this now there are a lot of caveats with this metric view but the important thing is you get <clears throat> you get a gold mine of information from this the duration part in this state this is very helpful for incident managers because they see how how long some team is taking time to respond so this is just another way of viewing the response sla you can also go back to the previous one which i showed where you can just put the SLA definition target as resolution and response <clears throat> but you also have this incident metric view where you can come and see the duration and you'll have a lot many incidents of course i don't have a lot of data for now but this is just a good starting point for you guys so that you can put your own assignment groups and you can play around with these fil filters now of course this was just a raw reporting part if you want to see a proper view let's say if i remove the filters i have a lot of data and if you want to see a visual si visual side of things as well so maybe we can just create a bar chart we can go next and then let's group it by the as breach so you want to see how many were breached and how many were met sla so like are you adhering to the slas or not if you want to see it on a visual visual this is how you see it so you have almost 13 which were meeting the sla and then sorry it has breached right so you you have 13 which were breached so which have the breached value as true and then you have the false ones as five so it's up to you how you configure it you'll have to put more filters because this is not the correct data <clears throat> you'll have to put the stages as well you'll have to put 
what is the SLA you're looking for? Is it response? Is it res resolution? So on and so forth. You can also style it. You can change the colors for this. Uh, there's a lot of opportunities there as well. Couple of videos on YouTube, how to do that. But the main premise of this video was how do we bring back those response and resolution SLA values? Because people usually they, they show you resolution, but you don't have response SLA, so to speak. I mean, you have to hunt for it. It's not right in front of you. There's this incident metric also, which is very, very helpful. You can pull this in Excel. You can do a lot more things with this. You can do pivoting. You can even uh, ingest it in, this in Power BI. There's a lot of opportunities with that as well. So this is just a starting point. Try to play around with this and see how it helps your business use case. So that's, that's all we had for this video. Please comment and let me know if you have any other questions. We can solve them in the next video as well.